This is Sean Hennon, writer of episode 718, Brothers. You're listening to The Blacklist Exposed on Golden Spiral Media. Aaron, we are like brothers, but I'm not going to kill someone for you. Welcome back to the award-winning The Blacklist Exposed podcast. I'm Agent Troy Heinrichs. And I'm Agent Aaron Peterson. I love you, Troy, but I want to say I do love my brother, my actual brother, my real one. Yeah, I like my Our real brother. one, too. I don't he like said you, I lo- He said I like. He didn't say you love. I'm just pointing that out in case he's listening. Thanks for joining us yet again as we talk about our brothers on The Blacklist, written by Sean Hannon and directed by Mahesh Palur. Also worth noting, the first episode with no appearance from James Spader, I do believe. So it doesn't mean anything, but it's a cool fun fact. If it's accurate, which I believe it is, we checked. Show notes and other intel for this episode of The Blacklist Exposed can be found at theblacklistexposed.com. Therefore, I'm guessing, Troy, no red rhetoric this week, right? There's no red rhetoric this week. I was going to put in that cool spiel the uh, the bad guy gave <laughs> over his garden with his plants. I was like, this is very red-like in the way he's delivering this. Maybe I'll use this for red's rhetoric, but no. Red's rhetoric is for red and red alone. You don't want to do wrestler's rhetoric? Uh, I don't think he really had any like squippy speeches. I mean, Liz nice. had the speech at the end. I'll tell you what, anybody that tells me that Liz wasn't great this week, I can't hear you. Like, I legitimately can't hear you because that speech at the end just moved me. I don't care. I just, I just, I just can't hear it. I can't have the hate this week. I just can't do it. I love it. Well, and I think that's the big thing. It's her mental state in this, in that final scene. I really think that that sets up a lot of how she's going to have to cope with whatever's coming in the last two episodes of season seven, because there's just a ton of crap that's going to go down based on what Red now knows, what she knows. Mm -hmm. I mean, she is in for a poop storm, as they call it, uh, in kindergarten. No one calls it that. In kindergarten, they do. Not in my kindergarten. <laughs> I, I grew up across your projects. We did not say that. We went all the way, man. Big, go big or go home. <sighs> you know what? Let's get into the actual episode. We got stuff to talk about. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit different this week because the episode's a little bit different. There's only two real main characters, so I don't know if we're going to do characters and profiling uh-uh. questions and reds rhetoric we're just gonna we're just gonna chat like family we're gonna, yeah we're gonna do it old school like like family you suck <laughs> going to my room <laughs> that's pretty much everybody's family right now are you drunk right now aaron i wish oh my god you know you know what was sad nobody's listening right okay um so i went to make coffee today like at like 11 in the morning and I've, I've got a thing where sometimes at, at night, like when, as the day goes on, like some days if I'm having a, a rough day, if I have a cup of coffee at the end of the day, which I don't normally do, but sometimes I do, I'll put a little Bailey's in it, right? Like Bailey's and coffee. That's a great way to end the night. It's the only way it should be drink, period. <laughs> it was 11 o'clock and I made a cup of coffee and I started actually taking Bailey because I'm working from home. So I totally, I'm thinking it's a weekend. I don't know why, even though I was working. And so I reached for the Baileys and I almost did it. I'm like, whoa, 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 I got a problem. <laughs> I'm actually, I can't even tell what time it is anymore. So that was a, it's a fun little side note. Why do you care? I don't think you do, but I'm just telling you anyway. Well, I'm just glad you're over your problem now, like Wrestler is. He doesn't have the addiction anymore. Yeah, just like that. Snapped right out of it. I am good to go. Never comes up again. You Ooh, know what else sorry. doesn't happen? Hair didn't move once. He, I think he wiped it out of his brow. When he was digging up that hole. I mean, I talk about, this is a perfect thing about family. <laughs> when you think about <laughs> a brother and a brother situation, <laughs> like, Hey, go out there and do the yard work. Oh man, I cut my hand. So I guess you got to do the raking and the <laughs> shuffling. <laughs> well planned. Well was like, planned. That was, that was brilliant. Like, Oh, sorry, wrestler, man. You got to dig that whole grave up <laughs> by yourself, which I think is only fair. Once you realize at the end of the episode that, He's the one that had to dig the grave the first time by himself because he's the one that killed him. I can't tell you how many times my my buddy Dennis is like my brother. We grew up together, so he is my brother. And uh, I can't tell you how many times <laughs> we would be, I'd have to fix something. And I'd always call him because he's the handy guy, right? So I'd call him, hey, can you, what do you think I'm doing? He's like, oh, no, you could do it. And so I'd do it. And I, I knew he's just one of those guys where if you're not doing it fast enough, he just takes over. So I kind of did that a lot. <laughs> right, I just I slow rolled it a little bit. It works pretty well. Man, I could just tell brother stories all day. Kind of. Yeah. That's I mean that's what it was. It was a true brother story. Yeah. It was about how 
in this case, you had Donald Wrestler and Robbie Wrestler, which isn't technically Robert Jr., right? Because his dad's name was Bob, so it's Bob mm-hmm. versus Rob, which is different. Uh, but Bob was killed by a, a bad guy because he didn't take the deal that he was supposed to take per Tommy Markin. And if you didn't know that that was Tommy Markin from the get go, I mean, it, it's like the whole, the whole thing's been leading up to, we got to see Tommy Markin at some point. Yeah. So, hey, you know what? We got to get into the actual, I don't know what we're, we're just rambling at this point. So, you know what? Let's break it down and do our profiling question real quick. Get oh, that sure. Out of the way. Sure. Yeah. Well, uh, last week was will Katarina kill Dembe's imam. Uh, the results were 60, 40. So 60 say no, no, she's not going to kill the imam. The one I don't have think that she will. spiritual grief on her on her hands. She's got enough stuff on her plate, but she doesn't want to mess with God too. Allah. <laughs> well, thanks for responding to our question for next week. Will wrestler and Keem become an item? Yeah, we're asking it. What do you think? They're gonna hook up because at the end, a lot of people were like, ooh, ooh, ooh. And then no. Nah. Oh. It did linger for a while though. And I, I do believe i think it was don Ron and uh, z hartley were hinting that at one of her watch parties they were like keep an eye and i think this is probably what they were alluding to i'm sure this it was. moment that almost kind of happened kind of really happened. happened could have it, it was there the tension the moment the feels mm-hmm. it was there but not quite all right let's get into it all right before one of us decides to become a cop let's really get into this week's case profile I mean, I was going to be a cop. I took criminal science. That's what I took criminal science for. I was going to be a cop. Didn't do it, though. All that. Kids young, and those kids don't want you going in the line of duty. So, took went another way. But we start in Detroit Rock City, 1995, chasing down a perp in a housing complex, which I got to say was, was kind of cool until they took me by surprise. I didn't think that was going to happen the way that it did. Bob Russell was shot. And Tommy Markin was part of the cover-up. He killed his dad. He killed their, well, I guess their dad. Well, the perp um, shot the dad, and then he shot the perp in cold blood <laughs> in the back, it looked like, if I remember correctly. Well, he finished him off. He killed dad. Well, did he actually shoot him, though? He said he would yes. take care of the wife and kids. I never saw, I think that's, I, I missed the shot then. My God. I thought he right. was already dead from the guy that shot him before. No, he killed him. <laughs> he killed him. So Tommy Markin did kill their dad. That did happen. And there was definitely a, a cover up in, in regards to that. Man, so how do how do you feel about finally getting the Tommy Markin story? I think it's fun. I think it's really good because it gives you a little bit of backstory about Donald and what he had to deal with growing up and decisions that he had to make in his life and uh, not getting to the point where he was the one that actually pulled the trigger to wound Tommy Markin because his brother actually is the one that killed Tommy Markin. I, I loved it. I think it's great to see the, the you know, that he had, that he was a troublemaker, that he never really was the boy scout that we all thought he was. Uh, he was, a, uh, you know, smoking up and, and drinking and just kind of all kinds of bad news as a teenager. And his brother was the straight and narrow and then it all flips. And it's the question of why did it flip? And that's what we get in this week's episode is that the reveal that even though that Donald Donnie went to go confront Tommy Markin, he didn't actually finish the job. And so his brother had to do it for him and their lives changed from that point forward because of it. Pretty crazy stuff. Now we've got a lot of flashbacks from this point forward. Like we're, as you go throughout the episode, we're going back and forth in time. So we've got young Robbie and Donnie, and then we've got the modern day Robbie and Donnie or just Rob and Don, I guess. Well, he called him Robbie. So Robbie's for sure. Don. Yeah. Donnie did say Donnie might be us, but who knows? It all rhymes. I like that. Did you did you find this as you were watching it that the actors playing the younger versions of them, the actor playing Robbie could have been either wrestler or Robbie? Well, I think that was the thing when you first saw the other him, kid didn't look like him at all. <laughs> you had that because uh, because when it first started out and started opening in the opening scene with the perp and everything, the first thing I thought of is okay, well he's dead, so it can't be the brothers. But initially, up until that point, he's laying on the floor in front of Tommy or I was just like, is this wrestler as a young cop? Is this his brother as a young cop? Like, what am I actually seeing here? And you don't really get that confirmation until Tommy shows up at the front door because even then in the kitchen scene, you're like, well, which one is Donald and which one is Robbie? Cause you know that Robbie spells trouble 
So you're thinking Robbie's the one that's token up and drinking and everything. And, and Donald's the one that's getting ready to go to the police office and it's actually reversed. So I thought that the, the play on that whole thing was a really great way to set up the episode. It was, but you didn't answer my question. Did you? Did I you never notice? do. What was the point? No. So that's why I'm going to ask it yet again. Don't you think that the kid playing, because the kid playing young Donald doesn't really look like Donald Rustler now. I mean, I think he must dye his hair, I guess. I don't know. But the kid that was playing young Robbie look could be either of them, honestly. Well, there are brothers. There is some hereditary similarity. Dear God, man, I'm talking about the actor. <laughs> Do you not agree that the actor looked like both of those men is what I'm saying? The one that played young Robbie? No, the one that played, yes, the one that played young Robbie, yes. Yeah, the one that played young Robbie looked more like older wrestlers than the young Donald looked like older wrestlers, correct? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I'm still not sure you actually answered my, my real question, but now I forgot what my real question was, so I'm going to move on. Does young, Donnie, wrestlers... does young Donald look like Donald? The answer is no. No, he does not. But his behavior but other... but I think his beha- behavior's aligned, because he even though he no, was... No, all that, all that worked. It's just I, There were several moments where... I was just getting a little pulled out, lost, and was thinking that, oh, is he is he Donald? Even though I know that they had said the names, but like early on, I was getting confused because Robbie, young Robbie, looks just like Donald Wrestler in many ways. I mean, same color hair and everything. Well, I was getting confused because I was like Robbie, Bobby, Bob. It was like who's who? <laughs> there's too many, there's too many obs in this. That's where I was getting confused. So that when Tommy Markin comes to the door and says. Bob's dead. And I was like, Oh, Bob's the father. This is Rob and Donald. Got it. Okay. Moving on. Right. So, yes. And, and I want to reiterate, cause apparently you got confused earlier, but when Tommy Markin was, he leaned right over at wrestler's dad and said, you should have taken the money. So yeah, he murdered him in cold blood. Well, no, I, the, the way no, I, he did. The way, I'm just letting you know the, he did. The way, well, <laughs> the way I saw that scene was that the reason why they were chasing the perp was because he didn't take the money, which then escalated the situation. So if he would have taken the money, then nobody would have died. But I still think it was the perp that actually shot Bob and killed him. And then you just see that it was a, that Tommy Markin was part of the situation to begin with. So he didn't kill him in the first degree. He killed him in the second degree. But yes, he was responsible for his death. Ultimately, no, he killed him. <laughs> He literally shot him. <laughs> he did right there. He aimed right over at him and shot him. That's the way that I understand. I think he literally pointed the gun right at him and just shot him. I thought he shot. The, I thought he shot the perp in the back. I'm not saying that they didn't kill the perp, but he also killed their dad. I don't. Remember, yes. I don't remember seeing that at all. You don't remember him like just moving the gun over there and just saying. I remember. I remember. I remember him holding the gun and saying, "You should have taken the money. Don't worry. I'll take care of the your wife and your kids." But I never saw him pull the trigger and finish him off. He killed him. I don't know. I'm telling you. Look, we we don't have the availability to rewatch it right now, but somebody, whoever's right, everybody listening is yelling at, at the other person. Right. And calling them an idiot. So one of us, you're calling an idiot. I'm just really hoping it's not me this time. <laughs> so moving on. You can let us know. <laughs> Team Troy, Team Aaron. Okay, so wrestler's a drinker and a midnight toker as a high school kid. That substance abuse angle goes way, way, way back. So that seed has been planted, and they're making sure to come back to it. Like, hey, he's always had this problem. It's an underlying issue with him. And his brother, Robbie, is slated to go to the academy, which, like we talked about, that was an interesting reversal on on the characters. Uh, St. Michael's, the patron saint of police officers. We've got that. Two Albanian goons, as the brothers actually come back to their town, we find out are spying on them. Did you have any opinion as to why they were following them at first, or did you? Well, I was really hoping assume? that it was tied back into the cold case, that they were actually part of a gang that was funded by Tommy Markin, and this was like a revenge play, is where I mm-hmm. thought it was going initially, and then was pleasantly surprised that it was something totally different. How did you see him? Um, I, I, I assumed it must be Robbie. I, I just assumed, yeah. Because, I mean, everything he was saying to mom, like, hey, you won't believe this, brother, but I, I'm clean. I'm good and everything else. I'm like, well, that's just not good. That's not going to happen. Like, my, I, I, it just feels wrong at that moment. My other thought in this episode was that the brother was going to turn into the next Tommy Markin. Like he was going to double cross wrestler somehow. That was the other thing that was going through my head as I watched it. These two goons are following him. Like, how did they just show up out of nowhere? So is really, is his brother going to turn on him? And this is all a con. That's what I was waiting for, too, was that his brother was a con man. Yeah, I was, I was kind of worried about that. I guess we should talk about the brothers. So now we've got Anthony Michael Hall 
doing a, a much bigger part. Like we had just a flash of him last week. Here we've got him in the whole episode as wrestler's brother. Do you have any opinion on him playing Robbie? Because I mean, I'll be honest, there's not a lot to talk about in this episode. Even though I really, I really enjoyed this episode. I thought it was a great episode. On the same token, character wise, I mean, it's pretty, pretty cut, to the point what happens. Yeah. yeah. So what did you, how did you feel about the brother dynamic and Anthony Michael Hall playing his brother? I think it's a really interesting take on why people go into law enforcement. Uh, there was a great line. It's literally like you don't ask, you don't even listen to the questions I ask. <laughs> you just let me finish and then you go talk about something else. Well, no, it, it answers your question because there was a, there was a line in here where it said, your dad is tough. Your brother's tough. You don't have the balls. And then he pulls the gun. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think watching Anthony Michael Hall play the brother I think it's a it's a really great way to see him try to. It, it's hard because you're you're playing an actor, you're, you're an actor playing a character that you have to play not only the part you're playing in the in the present day, but you also have to remember what was the actor that was playing the younger former version of yourself, and combining those into one character piece because you have to somehow call back to that the the past, right? So you have to know as much of the younger version of yourself as you do of the present day self. So I really like this dynamic of the story of the two brothers and how they, one was on the path for, you know, good and one was on the path for bad. And then it almost flipped in that regard. And it was because of this incident and the things that they did for each other that caused them to be on the path that they were on. So I love Anthony Michael Hall playing, you know, Robbie in this case, because he's able to play both the, you know, troublemaker, but he's also on the path of, you know, Hey, I did this for you. Like I'm, I'm do something at this point. Help me get out of this hole. I helped you. You helped me kind of thing. And I, I really love that aspect of it. It's a great story and a great way to tell it. Yeah. I had this thought as I was watching the episode because, um, like, like many of you, you know, the idea of wait, no red at all is going to be, and honestly, I didn't think anybody, any of the other actors were going to show up. Liz was a, was a pleasant surprise. We saw Liz in the promo. I didn't, didn't watch the promo. So no, I didn't. Um, so I was, I was quite, I wouldn't say I was, I was curious, like how this is going to play out. If you don't have any of the cast from the episode, how is this going to play out? And I really, really enjoyed it. Like I could follow these two just getting into crime and misadventures all over the place. I just think they had a really good dynamic. They worked well off of each other, you know, because wrestler is so stoic and kind of, you know, now he's in a place where he's very by the book and he's matter of fact, and he's very much Jack Webb <laughs> and Dragnet. And you've got Anthony Michael Hall, who on the on the flip side is very much an actor who I talked about last week has evolved in terms of his acting style. He went from the, the dweebiest dweeb of the 80s to like this big bulking man who looks like he could just beat the piss out of you in, in a heartbeat. And he still has that, like that over that overbearing build like he's a bulkier guy now and he's got some great stern glances like you know some actors they look at you sternly and they're like all right you're trying way too hard like he looks there are moments when when he looks very serious where i think he might just jump across the table and rip somebody's throat out and i like that in an actor because it makes him unpredictable makes what their actions are a little unpredictable yeah he's like what was it this it was the scene where he got punched in the face he's like oh yeah i probably deserve that but don't devalue me or whatever he said yeah, like, and it, it, that rang swing true. was great. That range is awesome. Yeah, it rang true. Every, everything about his performance rang true. I mean, it, obviously, you've got an actor who's been around for a long time. He knows what he's doing. But by the end of this, you know, a lot of times when we get these background roles, you know, there there's actors that show up and you either want to see more of them or, or you're good with what you got. I would love to see more of Robbie. Like, I would love to see Robbie show up more often and get involved. And I, I just really love what he brought to the table. I liked his performance. I liked the dynamic. It really kind of loosened wrestler up in some ways, which I think were necessary. We don't get very often. So I, I enjoyed the entire dynamic of it. So what you're saying is you're hoping for blacklist Detroit. Hey, there you go. Perfect spinoff. We'll get the brothers. They're just doing uh crime. He's basically working the underworld wrestlers working the FBI angle and boom, solving crimes. It could work. It could work. Yeah. Other city other cities have cop shows. Why not Detroit? And we find out Robbie's brother owes fifty grand to the Albanian mob, Yakov Mikov, aka Mark Margolis, 
Hector Ding Ding from Breaking Bad. You recognize him, I assume. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a problem. That's a problem. So they steal the car. Wasn't it? They get, wasn't it though that he earned interest? So he borrowed 50 originally, but then it's like with the interest, he now is up to 150, wasn't it? I didn't hear that at all. Yeah. I just that, heard the it 50. was at the bar. I think it was saying like, you know, with, with all the interest and I was supposed to pay it off and it's actually more than what the original note was. I didn't hear a number saying it was 150, but I heard, you know, I borrowed 50 and it was more. Maybe we didn't watch this episode. Maybe that's what, maybe that's uh, what happened. All I know is that he's in trouble. <laughs> that's all that matters. <laughs> there you go. So they steal the car. He's got the body. They, they dug out of the dirt, which I give him credit that Robbie could remember exactly where he buried it. But then you get the flashback and it kind of all makes sense. I don't understand how your foot pacing as you grow older stays the exact same foot pacing as it did when you were a well, kid. He was almost, an, he was an adult. He was going to college. So he was grown. That's true. Like his, his feet ain't getting any smaller. I was a size 13 when I was 14. So my feet are shrinking as I get older though. I don't know how that happened. I'm down a half a size. Of shoe? Yeah. You should call your doctor. That doesn't feel right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we, we find out that uh, they got the car, they got the body of Tommy Morgan, who wrestler thinks he killed, which we will talk about that in a second. But Yakov wants Donald to break into a room. Department 12 of the FBI Detroit field office needs a file called 432, 432 from the computers. Essentially, he wants to file an, he wants to find an informant. Right. And... Wrestler knows that means he's going to murder whoever that informant is, and he can't do that. And Robbie doesn't want him to do that. So they they both agree that they're going to go to the FBI and confess. And it's important to note, this is where we get the gist of exactly what happened. So what happened was originally a wrestler overhears Tommy Markin confessing to someone on the phone. So we never know who that other person is. There's somebody else involved that we never really get that background on, right? Well, he was drunk. So, you know, he might not have actually heard it the right way. (laughs) Theoretically. Okay. Let's just assume he heard, right? So he heard, he heard this guy talking to somebody, but we never find out who the other person is. So that person is still technically in play, correct? Correct. Okay. And he learns that basically this man was responsible for his dad's murder because he shot him, in my opinion. And (laughs) then he uh, he goes to confront him, has a gun pointed at him, and accidentally, well, not, I wouldn't say accidentally, but in anxiety-ridden state, he pulls the trigger. And Tommy Markin dies conveniently on a well-placed rug, which worked out fantastic. He calls his brother. <laughs> I'm glad you said something about it, because I was like, yeah. did he just fall like in the center of the rug to be an actual thing to carry him out of that house? Yeah, I laughed sure out loud. I was like, Dead that's funny. center. Now, at first, when I first watched it, I'm like, before I got his reaction, I'm like, oh, he did that on purpose. That's brilliant, wrestler, because this guy's going to land on the... Then you see his face, and he realizes it was a mistake, and he didn't mean to shoot him. And I'm like, all right, maybe not. But that works out. It's you know, whatever. It's TV. Um, calls his brother, the one person he can trust. And his brother actually tells him, because he's been studying for the police academy, so he knows how to clean up. He's like, hey, you go home. I'll take care of it, which is what a brother would do, honestly. That's what you do when you're a brother. Not, not that, that moment. I've done did, it. Did you, did you have any questions on whether or not, because he was talking to the person on the other end of the line, that maybe he wasn't dead or that maybe there was another person that was going to come jump Robbie at some point? Uh, because of that conversation, the entire episode, I was waiting for someone else to arrive. Yeah. I was waiting for like a mystery to be solved for Yakov to admit to being behind it or something like that. I just, I was waiting for something more because that other voice on the other, other end of the phone was never really resolved. Yeah, that's what I thought too. When Yakov was introduced, I thought, oh, Yakov worked with Tommy back in the day. Mm-hmm. And this is the, the the ring of people. And because there was the whole, you know, Tommy Markham was his inside man. Maybe there's this other guy who's the inside man. And that's how it's all kind of linked together. But unfortunately, that's not the way it went. No, that's not. And, and I'm fine with this because it you know, yeah, leaves it a little bit more mystery. Got more reason to go back to Detroit. Yeah. With Robbie. Partner up again. Um, yeah. So he takes... So what ha- what happens is Robbie takes him out there, buries him. Apparently he does some paces and everything. We never actually see him do the paces. We see him run. But whatever. And he's going to bury him and Tommy Markin is still alive. Now, remember he had asked Wrestler, did he confess? And Wrestler's like, no. But I feel like in that moment, Robbie came to understand that, yes, you you are the man that murdered my father. So he believes Wrestler at that moment. 
and he does what he thinks is right. He finishes him off. And it, it's funny because both of these moments are what changed both of these men's lives for the rest of their life. And they went in opposite directions, which I thought was interesting. Yeah, totally. So buried him in the rug. They got him, you know, he's in the trunk of the car, wrapped up in plastic. I don't know where exactly he is now. And apparently Rustler doesn't know either, but he was saved because they go through this whole sting operation. And while you're, while we're getting to that, we do get Donald. He gives the eulogy for his dad. Turns out he didn't really know him, but he's going to follow his path forward. On the flip side, Robbie really struggles in that moment. He can't go up and give a eulogy. He's changed his dynamic. He doesn't know what to do. He becomes a screw up at that point. He becomes his brother. Like they, they switch places at that point. Um, but they go through as adults and go through this whole sting operation, calling in Liz. Russell confesses everything to Liz and they, they go through with it. Now the whole time he says he's going to confess. Not for one second. Did I think he actually would be turning that body in? Did you? Because I didn't, not for one second. You didn't think that Donald was, or you didn't think that Liz was going to allow it? I didn't think, I didn't know who or how it was going to happen. I assume maybe she would call Red in or something, but I did not expect that body to be found. True. Yes. I, yeah. did, I, I was fully expecting Donald to, to come clean and tell the truth because that's who he is now, right? He is the Boy Scout. That's what we Which he did. come to know. Which he did do. Which he did to do. Her. But the whole time I'm like, all right. Liz is going to call Red. Red's going to make the body go away. We might not see Red in the episode, but the body's going to be gone because of Liz via Red somehow. That's exactly what I thought was going to happen. But what we come to learn is that they're, they're both basically set free because the body is not recovered. It's not in the car, even though Yakov threw him that bone. Like he tried, definitely tried to rat him out, but the body wasn't there. So they don't believe a word he says. And the, the guys realize, hey, well, I guess we're, we're free. They go home, they talk to mom, it's all smiles and laughs, and they realize that they're free and free and clear. And we learn that Liz actually did that for him. She didn't call anybody. She handled it. And I, I respected that choice. I respected that choice because it was not exactly what I thought was going to happen. They relied on Liz to reach into her inner Reddington, and I thought that was a great twist on it. Yeah, I mean, she's uh, going back to her Stumaker days. She just doesn't have a heart, a heart shaped hot tub laying around in order to get rid of the body. <laughs> it, it was a good, it was a good twist. It really was. And ultimately we have wrestler who finally gives that necklace back to his brother and where it rightfully belonged probably. And we have this, this episode wrapped up in terms of the brothers before the, the whole Liz thing, which we're going to talk about in a second. But overall, what, what did you think of this episode, man? I, I really enjoyed this. It's one of those, where I could, I didn't need any mythology. I didn't need a blacklister. I, di- I just really enjoyed watching these two go through their little shenanigans. Yeah, this is one of those things where, yes, it's called the blacklist on the front of it, but I didn't feel like I was watching the blacklist. I felt like I was watching a completely different show that I thoroughly enjoyed. Like mm-hmm. I would watch Diego and Anthony Michael Hall every week do brotherly cop stuff. Like it feels like a, like a lethal weapon or a, something of that nature, right? A Hawaii five O type show mm-hmm. where the two of them working together. I, I think it'd be a great spinoff to be quite honest. I'd watch it. Yeah, I, I really would. Like I was so, I was excited that Anthony Michael Hall was going to come on there, but I didn't know how much screen time he would get. I'm, I'm glad he got a whole episode and he's a big, he's a big part of it. I mean, it's really just those two for most of the episode and it worked out great. And mom and was great Liz- too. You could totally tell mom came from a cop family. Yeah. Yeah, she had that dialogue right at the end there. And it's like, well, mom seemed to know more than she was leading on at first. She's like, well, moms know, you know, you're here because Tommy was in trouble or or Bobby was in trouble. So, I mean, moms apparently don't know a lot because you don't know your boys like killed this dude and buried him one night. So Uh, she probably knew. You think so? No, I don't know. Because I kind of really wonder, like (laughs) you would think in their circle, there would still be a lot of. That would be a very important cold case. You know, cops don't just let other cops going missing, not get addressed. You know what I mean? Especially so close to Robert or Bob. See, this is confusing. Especially when Bob died and then Markin goes missing, what, like a week later? Mm-hmm. You think that someone would be investigating that a little bit more? Yeah. Now, are you glad we got flashbacks of, of what happened as as opposed to a bunch of exposition? Yeah, I like the, ex- I like the flashback. 
especially my favorite scene. Uh, maybe we'll transition to music here before we go to Liz. One of my favorite scenes is when they go to the hardware store. You know, first of all, if you're buying shovels, tarps, and bleach, the hardware store <laughs> guy should be like, oh, big project, hey? <laughs> like, That's where you <laughs> walk out. Don't buy it because you're about, <laughs> this is about to be used as evidence later in the trial. I was like, okay, this is a little bit, far. maybe, maybe, maybe get the bleach from Walmart, get the, sh- the, the shovels from Home Depot, like spread it out a little bit. Don't get it all in one place. Robbie needs to listen to more true crime podcasts. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Um, but when they uh, flash out to the car and then it does the whole transition into the past over black hole sun from Soundgarden, I was like, man, that is great. That is such a great music transition. I loved it. Uh, and then we also had uh, some other songs this week when we opened the show. We hear the pounding guitar chords of Fink's Warm Shadow as the cops chase down the perp in the housing complex. Then, uh, as mentioned, you get the uh, the great Black Hole Sun mm. trip from the Soundgarden group. And then you have Robbie arriving to help his baby brother as we hear Backbird, I think it's Blackbird song by Lee DeWise. And then at the funeral for wrestler's dad, we're treated to Down the Line by Jose Gonzalez. So uh, the whole music budget this week for season seven. Yeah, I, I was talking to somebody, I think it was last week or the week before. They haven't really had a couple, a bunch of songs on lately. You know, it's only been like one or two. Then you watch this one and you got Black Hole Sun from Soundgarden. I'm like, well, they had to save up. Yeah. That wasn't cheap. Could not have been cheap. That was not a cheap one. That's probably one of the, the pricier ones, but it was well worth it. And it really worked for the moment, too. Um, I, I always, <laughs> this is just a little Aaron thing. When I'm watching something where you have moments where somebody is reflecting on past on the past and there's actually private moments with one character that the other character wouldn't know, but they're kind of implied that that character's thinking about like where he's in the car. He's actually, he has, there are moments with both brothers that are reflected in that, (laughs) that memory. And I'm just like, well, how the hell would he know both memory? That doesn't make any sense, but it's a TV thing. You just gotta let it go. Right. (laughs) But as an Aaron, but as Aaron watching it, it's always one of those things like, well, how, how does that happen? I don't understand the math. Well, you mean a single person could have a memory about more than one person happening at a thing? Two separate. They're uh, they're isolated. So no, it can't happen unless it's the same person. Maybe they're connected. They're they're actually the same huh. guy. I want to. They're think split I, ids. I want to think there was another episode somewhere in the TV show that had a flashback episode where there was someone doing memories and trying to remember what happened. Mm. That had no, potentially or someone, one or two nah, people in it. No, no, no. That person <laughs> was going off of what they know happened at that time. So that that can go either way, my brother. Nope, nope. I can dispute that one all day. You can cape me your ass right out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, I was just saying, you know, absolutely. Like, this is what you call it a TV thing. So I was just, uh, I'm there just, aren't a lot of poor. There aren't. Yeah, it always happens in TV shows. <laughs> happens all the time. In this show, it happens all the time. There are always flashbacks where you remember and stuff that they couldn't possibly remember. It happens in TV. But that thing that you're talking about, specifically remembered the general events that happened, which were well known. So it's easily, it's easy to deflect. Like grandpa was generally reflecting on the events of Rosfiat based on what he knew. Well, he was making some stuff up too, but that's beside <laughs> the point. All right, let's get into Liz. Now, here's where I think I said earlier if you have a complaint about Liz, I don't care this week. You know, normally I'm very open. I'm like, hey, if, if, if you're a viewer. You're entitled. To... I think Megan Boone knocked this out. I think this was a great aspect of her character. I think she brought an emotional punch this week. And at the end where she's having her talk with Wrestler, where he's like, why would you do that for me? And she goes through that tirade where she's like, and this is what she says. You had to deliver a with feeling now. I'm, I'm not going to try and emulate. I, I, I got my Kleenex. I'm just waiting for the tears. Come on. I'm a widow with a single mom. A marionette with a high functioning sociopath pulling my strings. My grandfather tried to murder my mother. And my mother apparently is a lethal Russian spy who moved in next door without even telling me who she was. And maybe she's my dad. I don't know. I am in the middle of a monsoon that is constantly threatening to draw me a bad nose. <laughs> and somewhere is that female disaster of a life. Somewhere there's a tiny island of calm whose hair never moves. <laughs> If that weren't there, I would be swept out to sea. <sighs> Bravo. How's that? Yeah? Bravo. Liz still did it better. <laughs> oh, she, job, I Megan. think she, she did a, a great job. I really felt a gut punch watching that. And that's why I'm just, I'm just not, I'm not hearing it this week. 
people I, I always get tagged because I, I'm a Liz defender, but anytime that somebody doesn't like something, I get, I get tagged in the Facebook group a lot. And I'm just telling you, every time you tag me, I'm just going to ignore you. So tag away. Enjoy. No, I think this is one where, and I mentioned at the top of the show, this is where you see Liz really coming to grips with everything that's going on around her and trying to understand how, and, and this is a very similar to the, uh, I guess, fish in the cave, the Mexican cave fish. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they go in, they find the darkness, you know, will I, will I ever see the light again? Wrestler is her light. It's her focal point. If she doesn't have wrestler to bail her out of these situations and to be there for her, then she'll succumb to the marionette pulling her strings, whether that's her dad or her mom or the same person. I love that dynamic. And I know there were, there were a lot of the keenlers of the world were kind of hoping they were going to make out. Oh man. It was like edge of the seat, the whole scene. It was like, uh, I thought they were going to make out. I thought I it, totally it's thought coming. It. This is it. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to kiss. What, do, 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 do. Oh, now here's my question. You got a little chemistry there. You got a little feeling. Are you shipping these two or you just prefer them to be friends at this moment? If they were to get together as a couple at this point in the show, jump the shark moment for me. Hmm. If they get together in the season finale, because they've always been there through each other, through everything and they walk off into the sunset together. I'm okay with that because there's, there's definitely spark. There's spark. Yeah, I am of, I, I don't have a, I don't believe it's jump the shark at regardless well, because then you got to like work together and they already did that with the whole Aram and Samar I know, and, I know. The, and the hey. wrestler and Samar and I got it, Sparky. Simmer <laughs> down. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying it's not a, for me, it's not a jump the shark moment. It's how you would, to me, it would be how they would handle it. I don't need it right now. I would like to see it. I do think there's a chemistry there and I would like to see it in the final, you know, run of the show. Maybe the last, last couple episodes or something like that. That would right. be good to see. It would, it would be nice to see her land with someone that would treat her well and not be an absolute psychopath. Like, uh, who's that guy that died gracefully, gracefully, graciously. Uh, his name started with a T yeah, and then with I an M. All, he, all I remember is he used to do a lot of stuff that reflected who he was. You know, you remember all those people that were like, Oh, he's gaslighting her. He's gaslighting her. <laughs> Couldn't stand that guy. Whoever he was. I can't remember his name. It's so far away. Bye. <laughs> but I would be happy to see uh, a Keenler hookup. I think that'd be fun. Yeah, I think I think people were kind of suspecting that back in even season early season or early season two, late season one, the whole uh, you know, for your birthday got her the wine and everything. Yeah, like, there's always been that like underlying chemistry tension between the two of them. I hated you when you were first coming on, but now I kind of like you. And well, it's and def- I, I it's do, definitely there. Yeah, it's definitely there. And I'm not somebody that just ships characters. Like I just because two good looking people are in the same frame doesn't mean I think they have chemistry. Too often they do not. You know, too often I think characters get together that shouldn't. I think these two have a chemistry and moments like that at the end kind of kind of showed it because, you know, wrestler is not somebody who wears his heart on his sleeve or anything like that. He's like I said, he's very stoic. But whenever she gets emotional or she's having a hard time, his layers show a little bit more. And to me, that that's that's a chemistry. So I like that. I want to see it. Yeah. She was but also I, a little perturbed with them doing the uh, the dating service. Yeah. Last season. Bit. So. Mm-hmm. There's hints. There's definitely some hints, and I would like to see that. But I agree with you, not right now, because that'll just be a detraction, and we already are good with not having Agnes, so we don't need uh, other issues we, that don't really have to do with the blacklist. Which is actually kind of right. interesting when you think about it, because people always thought, oh, well, what if bro- what if wrestler, and they're like, she, he's like a brother to Liz and stuff, and this episode is called Brothers, so... Even though there's like that hint of a romantic tension between the two of them, could very well at the be, same time yeah. it could be a brotherly yeah. sister kind of shipping, if you will. Hey, very well. Hey, there's a lot of brothers and sisters who, you know, in in TV that have chemistry. Cersei and uh, her brother. Well, that's a little bit more. Chem- that's a little more chemistry <laughs> than we're talking about here. <laughs> they got along great. You got to come up it. with a different example. <laughs> they got along great. I get it. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> That's so wrong. Uh, that's funny. But yeah, it, this is one of those relationships that I would be fine either way. If they just kept it brother or sister, I think they have a great chemistry for that. And I think they have a chemistry for more, which if they if they wanted to go that route, which I don't think they're going to go in. Yeah, they so. need each other. They've trusted each other. He's done things on her behalf, even though she told him not to. She's done things on his behalf. And maybe that's what the show's alluding to by having it in the episode called Brother so that you feel that way. I mean, hey, 
uh, he, she sees him as her rock and he's he's a true brother to her so really maybe we're, i'm just reading too much into it but i did love the chemistry with anthony michael hall and diego so if they ever wanted to bring those two back again man let it happen i think they work great off each other and i think anthony michael hall just proves you can you can go a whole episode without red and it's okay i'm not saying do it all the time but once in a while i think it works out again it's another it's another example of how you can keep the show going with different different concepts definitely there you go <laughs> spin it up much better than watching tom take over a hospital all right so but, that's it for this episode. i'm just saying watching tom so and Eddie Gathegi together was fun <laughs> the two of them together was a good time I really like that again, Thetagy. Yeah, he was great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I want to take a second to say thank you to those of you that are supporting the show by going to Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O and that's patreon.com slash the Blacklist GSM. Special thanks to our honorary Blacklist, Patricia. Also special shout out to our task force members, Lacey, Marilyn, Judy, and Sharon. All of those people receive cool gifts from us and you can get a cool gift as well if you donate at the $20 level or higher. Do you want a cool t-shirt or coffee mug? You know you do. You don't have to stay at that level for long, just a few months to get the cool gifts. Right. And if $20 is too steep, our $5 level gets you early access to all the special episodes and interviews. We did another watch party with Sean Hennon, the writer of this episode. You can check that out on the YouTube channel. Uh, there's a whole playlist of the watch parties over there. And then you can also see those watch parties in the Facebook group as well over at the Blacklist Exposed GSM. Just search for Blacklist Exposed on Facebook. Uh, definitely go over to Patreon, though, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash the blacklist GSM. Fill the fedora, tap that dollar sign in your podcast app and help support the show as we almost are wrapping up season seven. What if you could live your life without limits, where every desire you ever imagined could be fulfilled? Experience Westworld, a show where every human's dark side will be revealed. After watching each episode, listen to Beyond Westworld, a podcast featuring humans and hosts from around the park, diving deep into HBO's illustrative narrative. Every hero has a code, and so do you. Download your itinerary and the show at beyondwestworldpodcast.com or your podcast app of choice. In case you're wondering, I believe this episode was supposed to be actually next week, right? So the episode numbers have flipped. So this is actually 718, but we are going back to 717 and we're going to 719 the week after that, correct? Correct. Am I understanding yeah. that correct? So, that, so for, for everybody that, because 717 was supposed to be the 150th episode, if my math in my head is correct. And I know people are like, oh, well, we're going to have 150th episode. It's a milestone episode. There's no James Spader. No, 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 no. This episode will always be in the books, in print, the, the script sheets, everything from production. This episode is 718. Brothers is 718. The episode we're going to see next week, Roy Kane, number 717, because I think 717 and 719 are going to go hand in hand much better together. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's all because of the COVID crisis. So we are all, the draft just happened for the NFL. We're all Monday morning quarterbacks, all saying <laughs> our teams suck and what they pick and all that other fun jazz. And we have no idea what the plan is. So as fans, we're kind of doing the same thing. But remember, if COVID wasn't here, you'd be getting three more episodes this season. So the plans change, roll with the punches, just that be happy. Fun. We got something. And I think this worked out well. You had right at the end of the episode last week, you had the whole sequence of you know anthony michael hall showing up it flowed really nicely into this week's I think episode it flowed great flowed great yeah. and then and, and it builds the tension you're like wait wait but, but but red passed out what happened to red what about red what about the imam what about the Kajan i didn't think about any of that is? that that's how good the episode was i didn't think about any of that the entire episode exactly. all i was i was following this i thought it was a great episode of television i didn't even think about any of that even when i saw liz i'm like i don't need any red stuff or mythology or any of that this week i just i want to this is a cool story I, i'm interested and if, and if we're assuming that it was the Kazanji brothers that kidnapped the Imam, the two guys that gunned down Katarina at the fall finale, if, if that was who kidnapped them, and then we have to figure out like what's going on, like, wouldn't it be great? That leads into the finale. We track down Katarina, we find out what's going on, we find the Imam, and it just, that all flows so much better, especially with Red's illness and what that all has to do with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. And Diego was doing a bunch of interviews and he stated that the uh, 19, that they're working some magic, the Johns are working some magic, and that it, 
it will function as a very good cliffhanger finale. So he think he's very happy with the way it's going to go. And I, I think we're all going to be pleased. I mean, like I, like I said before, when we talked about this, every episode is really a cliffhanger. So, I mean, if we would have ended the, the season last week with Red passing out, that would have been a fantastic season finale. It really would have been. It, it would have been. been lingering over on your head for the rest of the season. Like, oh my God, what happened to Red? So I have no doubt that whatever is going to happen in the final episode of the season, it will feel like a cliffhanger. It will feel like a season finale. Yeah. And that's just the, the unknownness of if, if, when, how it comes back because right. you don't know when production starts up again. Right. I'm, I'm really hoping that wrestler and Liz, if they are going to hook up, do get to kiss this season because I don't know if kissing is going to be allowed anymore. I don't know what the, <laughs> what the rules are going to be <laughs> with acting going forward. It's going to be a whole lot of air kisses. Like all the shots are going to be from the side. So, all right. So you're like six feet in front of them and they're shooting like the Hobbit. So it's all like distance shots. And no, it's going to be a lot of cases look. where it's, uh, this network has a piece in Philly and this network has a piece in Dallas and this network has a piece <laughs> in Seattle and they're all on the phone together. Mike, <laughs> you never know. Might happen. Push the button uh, on your side. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> Whatever happens, if anybody's listening and they cares, definitely bring back Robbie. I, I thought he was a great addition. And I thought I think it was a great could addition. Be fun. Yeah. Yeah. It could be fun. Maybe he goes and he goes and gets his degree and becomes a cop and wrestler brings him on the task force to get him trained or something. I don't know. Maybe. It'd be fun. Well, you, maybe not in the task force because not everybody has to work. It's like everybody's got to be related to Red somehow. Uh, everybody doesn't have to be on the task force. Maybe we go ahead and do it from a standpoint of... I feel like you're throwing words back in my face because I said this about <laughs> some other things. That's exactly right. Uh, no, but I think it'd be fun. Like Maybe there's an episode next season where he gets stationed in the, the Denver Bureau office or whatever, and they have to go to Denver, and you run into him again. I think that'd be great. Absolutely. There are plenty of ways they could work him back in. I mean, we've got plenty of characters that don't matter. Some, maybe Red uses him for something, and you know he's not happy because he needs something done in Detroit. Oh, and then maybe wrestler that, finds that, out about yeah, it. Yeah, wrestler finds out about it, and the wrestler goes after Red. Could be. You never know. There's always a way to go, and anything they're bringing Anthony Michael Hall back, I think, is a good thing. Anytime you can come up with more great stories. Yeah, and you know what? I really hope one of us is right because one of us is correct that that cop either shot wrestler's dad <laughs> or didn't shoot it. Troy says no. I say definitely. So one of us is wrong, and it's great when one of us has to be definitively wrong. There's no theory. There's no hypothesis. It's you're right or you're wrong. And we're going to find out for sure later. And we'll talk about it next week. Like real brothers, we're going to rub each other's nose in it. All right. All right. That's going to conclude this episode. Six seasons are on Netflix. Now is the time to recommend the blacklist to your friend, your enemy, your neighbor. And when you do, please also recommend they listen and subscribe to the blacklist exposed podcast. All the case profiles can be found at the blacklist exposed.com and everywhere. Great. And even Above average podcasts can be heard. So many new ones because so many people have nothing better to do. So make you know sure you what? Go ahead and There's a lot the of junk floating out there right now. Can I tell you? Like this is really sad. Dennis Quaid has a podcast. He's one of my favorite actors. It's not good. <laughs> I was very disappointed. I was very disappointed. I'm like, man, I'm gonna have to go back to old Dennis Quaid movies because this is not working for me. Oh, Inner Space. Got to watch Inner Space now. D O A is my favorite Dennis Quaid movie, and most people haven't seen it. Frequency is great too. Love frequency. I cry at the end every time. What, every time. What was the the baseball movie? The rookie. The rookie. Yeah, the rookie. That's a good one too. That's the one that really brought him back because his career was kind of it was almost in Randy Quaid land, and then that movie brought him back. Right, maybe Dennis will show up on the show now. Oh, <laughs> I would. I would love to see Dennis Quaid as a black. I lo- he's, seriously, he's one of my favorite actors. <laughs> he's got that smile too. That'd be funny. Like, oh, like the he kills grin. somebody and then he does that grin with the winky face. Yeah. Yep. Totally. Love it. For more great Aaron and Troy hijinks, follow us on your favorite social media outlet. I'm at Troy Heinrichs. He's at Aaron Smirks. Together we are at the Blacklist GSM. Talk about the show, the podcast, or what your dream muscle car looks like. That car is awesome. sweet. Sweet. Mustang, I would have, wasn't it? Yeah. If they want to give that to me, I mean, just for you know years of doing this podcast, I will take it. <laughs> I love that car. I'll take it with a body and I don't care. Leave a corpse in it. I'll still take it. I'll get rid of the body for you. That car is amazing. Do you know why it survived the episode? Huh? Because Tom wasn't driving it. <laughs> it's true though. It's true. Because you know why? Tom's going to Tom. All right. Big thanks for listening. Don't forget our profiling question. Will wrestler and Keen become an item? Take care guys. We'll be back with more next week. We'll see you later. Until next time, I'm Agent Troy Heinrichs. That's at Troy Heinrichs on Twitter. And if you want to learn more about me, just visit, well, about.me slash Troy Heinrichs.
and I'm Agent Aaron Peterson. You can hear me talking about movies and TV on the Hollywood Outsider podcast, as well as remake this movie right. We are available at thehollywoodoutsider.com or on Twitter at 5popcorn. Be sure to subscribe, download the app, submit your feedback, but most importantly, keep yourself off of The The Blacklist. The Blacklist Exposed is a Golden Spiral Media production. Find more of our great podcasts at goldenspiralmedia.com slash podcasts. I really hope Ryan doesn't listen to this. I'm sorry. God, I hate Tom.